Okay. So if you're ready, I am ready. Let me just center myself a little bit. Yes, I'm ready. If you're happy with your visual, I'm happy with yes. my visual. Yes, it's okay. It's okay. We can we can manage this. All right. So good evening, Dr. Augustina, for joining us, and thanks so much for your time and obliging to be our woman for the day. Good evening. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, it was my honor. I don't know that I deserve to be the woman of the day. <laughs> Every woman is the woman of the day. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let's start by asking you, um, what are some of the challenges you face as a woman in, in your career, especially knowing that you have a large chunk of the men folk, you know, as neurologists? It is true um, here in Ghana and in Africa in general, uh, the majority of neurologists are male. Um, I like to think that I have very sensible colleagues and I cannot say that the fact that I am not male has caused any significant issues with my colleagues. That's not to say that outside of my colleagues, um, I think culturally just we expect a doctor, um, let alone a specialist, to be male because there's that authority that goes with calling yourself a doctor. Um, so that has sometimes proven to be a little bit of a challenge and you have to prove yourself that, yes, I do know what I'm talking about. Just because I'm female doesn't mean I don't. Uh, but thankfully, um, rare occasions as such and few and far between. So I have, I have good colleagues. I'm, I'm grateful and very lucky. Indeed. Well, as, as a mother and also as a career person, how are you able to manage both on the same level? On the same level? Not at all. <laughs> um, it's a juggling act. Um, any woman who says oh, it's easy is mm. just fooling herself and everybody else. It's difficult. Um, I do personally, it's nearly impossible to do both equally well. One has to suffer. Um, and it's a matter of deciding how much you can give in one field and how much you shouldn't give mm. in another field. So it, it's a day-to-day -day battle trying to find the balance. Um, it's not easy, but again, every woman will tell you, and no matter your career, no matter your profession, even if you're stay at home, it is always a juggling act. Mm. Um, well, so everyone has it tough. Yeah, but what would you say has been the most difficult aspect of your career? Uh, what is that thing that you would say, oh, I mean, in my entire profession, this I would say has been the most uh, dramatic the most of the issues of all, of all of it? So I wouldn't go as far as to call it dramatic, but the biggest challenge I have found, and I think this is not because I'm w a woman, woman. Mm -hmm. but because of the kind of specialty that I am in. Um, there are so few of us, we are few far between. Um, it, it is a lonely job at times. Um, the patients are all different and there are often complex cases. And sometimes you just find yourself in a position where there is no one to discuss the case mm. with, to get a, a fresh idea, a different perspective, a new look on things. And I think that in general in my profession is the hardest thing. Um, I wish there were more of us um, so that we could all team together, all for the purpose of mm. having our patients get the best that they can. Mm. But, but why is it difficult for to have more women in, in your field? Oh, it's not about women. It's doctors in general. Neurology, the brain, the nervous system mm. is, in my opinion, erroneously, but the general perception is that it's extraordinarily complicated and very difficult. Um, so most people coming out of medical school have a fear of the nervous system and therefore they are not that interested in specializing in it um i personally think that there's no way you can not be curious about the nervous system because it's yeah. everything that we do it's what makes you who you are it makes me who i am it's, it's what makes me be able to communicate with you and you to understand what i'm saying so it's in everything we do and i think when we look at it that way it's less frightening less daunting it's still complicated but it's extraordinarily interested and i i want to infect 
um, all my colleagues and the junior doctors, mm -hmm. um, those still in training to get interested in the nervous system, not to be so afraid of it, because at the very least, the, what you gain out of it is learning to understand yourself. Mm. Has there been a point you felt like totally giving up the entire thing? Oh, no, never. <laughs> um, I think I am, I am that enamored with the nervous system that no one has yet been able to put me in the position where I said, no, this is not what I want to do. Mm. I, I love it passionately. Mm. Well, what would be your advice to young women out there who a lot of them, you know, are now into STEM? Not everybody is going to medicine these days, uh, but for those who still have that love and would wish to be one doctor or the other, uh, what did you tell them? Well, the first thing is be sure you know what it is that interests you and what you like. And I'm not the kind of person who says, oh, if you want, you're interested in science, you must be a doctor. Mm -hmm. No, there are many, many different allied fields to medicine that I do encourage um, fellow women to go into um, science, technology, engineering. And even within medicine, there are many things you can be without being a doctor. Um, so yes, one, do be interested in what you do, no matter what it is. And again, contrary to popular uh, perception, science is not something that the female brain is not capable of understanding. In fact, there have been studies, <laughs> speaking like a scientist, mm. there have been studies <laughs> that have shown that there are certain characteristics of the way women approach problems that are beneficial to taking mm. care of patients, et cetera. And there, are, there have been other studies that show that outcomes in patients who are taken care of by female doctors, female specialists are actually better than those taken care of by men. And I think it may well, have why, a little why bit is that to do. So? I'm a man, why is that well, so? Well, the explanation <laughs> is complicated, but I think that has something to do with women are naturally nurturers. Okay. So that it's not equal to you have to be a mother. There is no equivalency between you're a nurturer and you are a mother. Mm. But we are nurturers by nature. Okay. And that's also, well, sometimes we have no choice because you're a mother as well, uh, to take care of things. And so we approach problems in terms of care. So we, we don't break things down into the cut and dry this is the science and this is what needs to be done, et cetera. So um, that might be an explanation, but that's the whole field of study of its own as well. Mm -hmm. um, in general, I do prefer not to differentiate between male and female in any of the professions, um, because whilst we do have different characteristics, we yeah. are capable of many of the same things. Our approaches may be different, but we're equally capable. Hmm. Well, let me just quickly ask this before I, I let you go. Uh, when you were a young person, did you ever think you would get to this point uh, that you are now? Uh, not the specific point in terms of my career, but I did know I would be doing something in science. And when I did enter the field of medicine, I knew it would be in neuroscience. Um, the, the exact career trajectory that has surprised me a little bit because I now find myself in advocacy positions, which I didn't really think about when I was young, but it's all for the same purpose, for the neuroscience of it. Well, finally now, finally, this is like my trivia question. Do you think women <laughs> can do better in leadership? I think women must definitely put the themselves in positions of leadership. Um, I think I answered this a little bit in my previous statement. It's not a matter of better. It is sometimes mm. a matter of different. Okay. And it's definitely not a matter of worse. Um, and sometimes it requires that different approach to get something from a standstill, from a rut, and get it moving again. Um, mm. Until we as women have ourselves properly represented in positions of leadership as well, but not only. Um, uh, women make up half of the population. You can't use one perspective to deal with the whole. No. 
only. You need both perspectives. So yes, we should be in leadership and we should learn to work together. It, it's not a fight. Um, people seem to think <laughs> that when we start talking about what women should do and shouldn't do, it's mm -hmm. not a fight that we should do it and you shouldn't. It's that we have to do it together and we have to learn to work together because we do things equally well, just perhaps from a different approach and a different perspective. And anything always benefits from from a different perspective. And uh, Dr. Tina Chawi Feli, Senior Neurologist at 37 Hospital at Krai, Ghana. Thank you so much for being the woman of our day. I appreciate you. And continue Thank to do you. the good work appreciate that you're doing. Indeed. I will do my best and everyone out there, please do take care and keep safe. Indeed, bye. Bye.